this is the topic for the day. How do you do indexing in Vector? So I would request all of you to give, pay some attention here. So we just saw how index, indexing is done. Given a vector of data, one common task is to isolate particular entries that meet a given criteria. So I have a vector. I want to pick only a set of entries that meet a given criteria. And how do I do this? Here in R, we show how, how to use the R indexing location to speak, pick out specific items in the vector. So how do we are going to be doing indexing with logical values, not available or missing values, and how do you use logical expressions? So you have a vector, you use a criteria to isolate values, and then you can use them to be analyzed. So the first thing is indexing with logicals. So what you hear here is I have an index A, which says it is using a values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. It has five values here. I have an index B which again has five values, which is true, false, true, 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 false, false, true, and false. I'm now going to run a command which is A of B. And what is it going to do? It is going to apply this condition to each of these positions. And every time this position returns results in a true, it is going to print out that value. Every time it is going to have a position as a value of false, it is going to ignore the value. So it applies one on one. When I say A of B, and it's going to print 1 because 1 is true. It is going to ignore 2 and 3 because they are false. It is going to print 4 because it is true. And it is going to ignore 5 it is false. And now you can take this value, use it on other function, assign it to another variable, stuff like that. So for example, I'm taking A or B and then passing on to another function called mass, max. It's going to take that 1 and 4 and do a max of it. And passing to another function called sum is going to give me a 5. So this is an interesting way in which R behaves. So it applies this condition whatever conditions you are pass, condition you are passing in the square brackets to each of the member of the vector and whichever wherever the condition is successful or true it is going to give you out the values otherwise it is going to ignore the values the next thing we want to talk about is not available or missing values whenever r does not see data for a particular column which might happen when you are loading data sometimes a value might not exist for a given row or a given column uh, or an even cell, what does it do with it? So in this case, I'm creating a, a, a vector which says 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm using the value NA. NA stands for not available for missing. You don't use quotes for NA. If you use quotes, it becomes a string. So I'm assigning for to a, to a variable called A. I'm printing a variable here. When you do sum of A, it tries to give you a value NA. That's because whenever you are trying to use the value NA in any of your arithmetic functions, NA cannot be used because it has no value. The arithmetic function will also turn an NA for you. That is why whenever you call an arithmetic function, you want to use NA.RM equal to 2, which is not available remove equal to true. Then the sum function will ignore this particular value and do the, do the do its computation on the rest of it. So watch out for this. Whenever you, any of your function is giving you a value NA, it means it's unable to do. There's got a value which is not available and you might want to handle it in this way. There are, of course, functions to check whether a particular value is NA or it is an NA or not. If there is, I think, a function called is.na, which will check whether a value is NA or not. You can do the is.na on an entire vector, and it will print you the result for each of the members of the vector, whether that member variable is, a, uh, is an NA or not. So NA is a, another important part you want to remember, because missing values can impact a lot of your computations. You want to handle, you want to always check for missing values, the data that is coming in, and handle them appropriately, which is you might want to replace missing values with a zero or any kind of default value, or you might want to ignore them as a part of your computations, whichever one makes sense for the particular scenario. This is the other way by which you are going to be using filtering. So you have what I call C6285, something like that. Now I can say A, where A less than 6. So A less than 6 is a, fun is a function by itself. When you say A less than 6, what it is going to do is, it is going to do an inspection of this, uh, of this vector A, each of the elements. And for each of the elements, you're going to apply this condition. And it is going to return a true or false based on the conditions true or false. So it is going to, when it is a less than 6, it is going to give me back a logical vector 
of all the results of, of analyzing this particular vector, like we saw in the example below, like it's going to give me an array like this. Then this array is then applied onto this condition, like here. So it's going to use this condition, apply it to the to this particular vector, and it's going to give me back the result. So a where a less than six. This is how you are going to filter data that is in an array. You can use the same thing to filter data for columns or rows in a data frame also. But you have to use the variables explicitly. You can't say a bracket less than six. That's not going to work. You have to say a where a less than six. And you are sending that to B, and you are printing out B here. 